Shalom, this is Quay. Today we're going to begin to look at chapter 6 of the book of Revelation. And so there's a bit of a transition. The first three chapters were about the um, message of Jesus to the specific churches at that time and also to the church throughout the ages. The uh, fourth and fifth chapters, we looked at what goes on in the heavenly throne room. And now we are ready to begin to look at when Jesus opens the seals on the scroll that was sealed up. So uh, before we get into this today, I uh, um, just want to give a little bit of a reminder that this study is uh, not meant to be a scholarly study, although I believe it is very imperative to study the scriptures in a scholarly way, and I do so regularly, but um, we're not trying to cross every T and dot every I in that sense. Uh, it's, it's not uh, totally comprehensive. There are many things that we talk about that uh, really deserve much more in-depth looking at, but we're trying to keep this study as um, really hearing from the, the heart of God as to what the Spirit is saying to us as the church at this time and how these things apply to the day in which we live. And uh, they're also designed to uh, be friendly even for families uh, with a little bit uh, older children, maybe six, seven years and up. So we try to keep them short, around 15 minutes each. And um, so I hope that just helps to give you an understanding of what, uh, what our goal is, to open the Torah scroll and to try to speak uh, from, the, from the heart of God, but in a way that is based on the truth. And so uh, we remember that in the very beginning of the book of Revelation, there's a blessing that comes to those who uh, read, read it out loud, hear it read, uh, and give heed and obey the words that are written in it. It's called a prophecy. It is one long prophecy. It's not a bunch of different prophecies, and it, it describes itself as a prophecy. We also remember that this was given by the grace of God uh, from the Father to the Son to give to John the Apostle to give to the church throughout the ages. It's a personal thing for us. It's very relevant for us. And so with those things in mind, we will begin with chapter 6. To, uh, this session will be a general overview of the first, I believe it's um, four, five, six, seven verses. Um, and uh, remembering now, even as, as we just begin, that we found out who is the one who is breaking the seals, who is the one who is overseeing everything that's prophesied here? It is the Lamb of God, the one who has full authority in heaven and on earth, the one who was found worthy to break these seals and to open this scroll uh, because he paid the price for every tribe and every tongue, every man, woman, on the earth who will avail themselves, who will humble themselves and believe and receive the salvation that comes through him. He's the only savior. He's the only one who gave his very body and blood to uh, oversee these things. 
So we keep that in mind and that also uh, constantly refreshes us with his love so that as we read these things, we do not become afraid in an ungodly way. Okay, let's uh, begin to read in chapter 6, and it, this is a, a very general overview in this session of, uh, often it's called the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Then I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a loud, excuse me, with a voice like thunder, come. Now some versions also say, come and see. I'm reading from the tree of life, which does not include come and see, but many translations do. In, at any rate, it's an imperative uh, command to John. This is something that is very dear to the heart of the Father and the Son and the Spirit that we are aware of, that we are able to look at and see. I looked, and behold, there was a white horse. The one riding on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. He went out as a conqueror, so he might conquer. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. Then another horse came out, fiery red. The one riding on it <clears throat> was permitted to take peace from the earth so that people would slaughter one another. He was given a great sword. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come, and behold, a black horse. The one riding on it held a balance scale in his hand. Then I heard something like a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of of barley for a denarius, but do no harm to the oil and wine. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living creature saying, Come, behold, I saw a horse, pale, greenish-gray. The name of the one riding on it was Death, and Sheol was following with him. Authority was given to them, over a fourth of the earth, to kill by sword, and by famine, and by plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. These are uh, not always easy uh, passages for us to uh, look at. Many people have shied away from uh, the book of Revelation in general, and certainly from this point on. Um, but uh, I hope that uh, I hope that we can, you know, stay together in this uh, going forward. We're not going to go into detail in this session. So um, I hope that uh, we'll come back for more in depth on these so that we can have clear understanding, be uh, free of fear and be delivered from deception, because the Lord gave us this information. This is like in in the you know in the military you would call it the you know the the, the reconnaissance, the military intelligence that you need uh, in dealing with situations against your enemy, so that you understand uh, what what is up and what he's all about, and so it uh, the since these four living creatures each came with each seal and expressed to John, come, and it was an imperative, um, come 
and see this is something that I am permitting you to look at. See, these things have been sealed up until now, but they are essential for, for the church to have understanding of in our day and in our time. It's been really essential since this book was, was written back in the uh, around 90 AD or so when it was written. Um, so just a couple of general things uh, before we close out for today. Um, in the past, you know, I have, uh, I've, like I said, I actually, you know, I do study a lot. And um, I, I, have, I have studied uh, many different people who have brought forth, you know, their, their commentaries and, and their understanding on uh, this particular chapter. And um, until very recently, I, I really adhered to the, um, the, the, the train of thought that says once these seals begin to be opened, that <coughs> these events uh, come in a chronological uh, fashion, one following after the other, and that it, it takes place during the last seven years of transition from the age that we have been in for uh, at least six millennia uh, unto the next age that is promised where Jesus will rule and reign on the earth. Um, and uh, I, I felt like I don't think these seals have been opened yet, but uh, I'm beginning to uh, have a little bit different view on that. This is one of those things that is, shall we say, negotiable. There are the non-negotiables, that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father, that, you know, he, he uh, paid for our sins and, and, and made the way for us to be in uh vibrant relationship with the Father through the cross, through, through the blood. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit is given to us to uh, help us to uh, write the laws of God in our heart, cause us to be transformed more and more into the image of Christ, that Christ is in heaven right now, interceding at the right hand of the Father, and that he will literally return to this earth. That's, that's non-negotiables. But outside of most of that, I, I hope I remembered to cover everything, uh, there, most everything else is, is negotiable, uh, is, uh, and, and I believe that God delights as we dig into his word and, you know, as we listen to his spirit and we uh, are trained by him day after day, and, and sometimes we can't bear everything at once. Remember what Jesus said right before he went to the cross. I've got a whole lot more to tell you, but I can't tell you it right now because you can't bear it. You're not, you're not in a position where, you know, you're, uh, you're, you just couldn't take it. You, you would either reject it because it, it, it would be too frightening, too much, uh, even even on the glory side, just too much to even bear. So I'm going to send my spirit. And that's the way I've found throughout my years with the Lord that I have understanding of things now that I didn't have when I first believed because I would not have been able to have a grid or to understand the spirit needed to do some work in me. And so uh, I just want to encourage all of us, especially as we study Revelation, to be um, very, very adamant on the non-negotiables, but um, to, be, to be open to the negotiables and to <clears throat> allow the Spirit to, um, you know, tweak how we see things as we come into more maturity with Him. So, God bless you, and uh, we'll see you at the next session. Shalom.